This video is going to kick off our neural block, and we're going to start this block by talking about the development of the nervous system. Now, your nervous system is made up of two things. Your central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord, and your peripheral nervous system, which is everything else. Everything else. And so all of this makes up your nervous system, and that will be the talk of this block. Now, how do we form this complicated thing in the first place? Well, when we're an embryo, we make this long tube. And this tube will start to grow and elongate. And as it grows and elongates, it'll start to bulge. So we'll have a little bulging and swelling. And it'll continue that course until it kind of coalesces in the front which gives us our brain. And then the back part will give us our spinal cord. Okay, so we'll write spinal cord. This will be our brain. And all of that comes from this little tube. We call that the neural tube. Now, how do we get to that neural tube in the first place? Well, to get to that, we have to go a few steps back. Recall way back when we had just three tissue layers. And these tissue layers became everything else. So we had the endoderm, we had the mesoderm, and we had the ectoderm. Your ectoderm is what will become the neural tube. Now to make all this and become the brain and the spinal cord, that's quite a tall order. Yeah, so the ectoderm, the neural tube will need some help. And so the mesoderm says, I can help you out. And so your mesoderm forms a small tubular rod called the notochord. Now just write notochord. And that notochord kind of guides the ectoderm above it, kind of tells it how to form this neural tube. It says, I got your back, I'll help you out. So it sends signals to your ectoderm and tells it to make this tube. So your ectoderm says, all right, that's cool. So part of your ectoderm will become your neural tube. We call that part the neural plate in the beginning. And that neural plate will start to fold up on itself and eventually come together and form your tube. So that explains the brain and the spinal cord. We said that was part of the CNS. Well, how about the PNS? How about everything else? Well, as this neural tube is coming together, then the cells, there are some special cells at the top or the crest of the tube. Crest just means top. So there's some special cells at the crest of the tube, and these are called your crest cells. And when you finally come together, then your crest cells will kind of fly off. You now they're kind of floating out here. And these special crest cells will become your PNS. And by making that neural tube, that's how you make your CNS. And by the little crest cells coming off and becoming your PNS, that's how you make your PNS. There you are. That's how you make your nervous system. Now that's a very quick, brief overview. I just want to look at it in a little bit more detail. So if we, so we take the cord, it starts with a nice long cord, and then as it kind of grows, it starts to bulge and make these little enlargements. And then finally, these enlargements will kind of coalesce and make the brain, and then the back part of it will become your spinal cord. Okay, so let's just take this part and look at it in a little bit more detail. So these bulges aren't at random. They actually split this primitive tube into three parts. So if we flip this tube and look at it kind of this way, where you're looking at the tube straight up and down, then it'll look kind of like this. So the bulges aren't at random and they kind of split the tube into three parts. And then the last part, this bottom part is just your spinal cord. Spinal cord, okay? So these bulges will eventually have to make your brain. And so the one in the forefront, this one, is called your forebrain. Also known as your proencephalon. The one bowl is kind of in the middle, called your midbrain, aka your mesencephalon. 
And then the one in the back, the one in the hind end, will be called your hind brain. Hind brain. Or your rhombencephalon. And as they grow and as they kind of mature a little more, they start to grow a little more complicated. So they start to bulge even further. So you go from three bulges to five bulges. I don't, I don't think bulges is the right scientific term, but you, you get my drift. So the forebrain, the procephalon, will split off into two groups. The top group, these large kind of lateral bulges kind of look like Mickey Mouse ears. The reason why it looks like this is because it will become your cerebral hemisphere. So if you look at the brain from the back, it will look like two lobes, like Mickey Mouse ears. So that is from your proencephalon, that's called your telencephalon. And that makes your cerebral hemisphere. Your procephalon also becomes your diencephalon. And this makes your thalamus. Let me color coordinate it. So orange will be your forebrain. Now your midbrain will be brown. And your midbrain doesn't split up. Your midbrain is nice and easy. Your midbrain stays your midbrain. And this makes your <laughs> this makes your midbrain. So that'll be brown. Your hindbrain also splits up. Likes to split up kind of like his forebrain brother. So your robencephalon will split up. Well, the note this is purple. The top portion will be your metencephalon. This will be your pons, your cerebellum. And then the lower portion will be your myelencephalon. And this will be your medulla. I know that's a lot to take in, and if you haven't done neuroanatomy, you have no idea what any of these are. Lucky for us, we're gonna go through them systematically. Okay, so we're gonna talk about all of these in the coming videos. But I just wanna give a brief overview, a brief rundown on how we make the brain in the first place and how we make the spinal cord in the first place. So, so embryology wouldn't catch you off guard. Now, neuroanatomy might, but at least embryology won't. All right, so that is how we make our neural tube. That is how we make our brain, our parts of our brain and our spinal cord. Now that's how your neural tube is formed normally. Well, what can go wrong? Well, if I can think of one thing, how about if it never connects? Yeah, if it never forms that tube. You see, when you form the tube, it doesn't come together like this. It comes together kind of like this. And so there's holes, these little pores, we call them neural pores. If you have enough of them, then your neural tube never basically forms. You can have a leakage, yeah? you can have your neural tube leaking things. Now your neural tube should form within four weeks as an embryo. If it doesn't form, then you can have that leakage and we can find things that are leaking out and say, okay, our neural tube didn't close. What are some things that can leak out? Alpha fetal protein is a big one. Why alpha fetal protein? What's the most abundant protein in an adult person? It'd be albumin. Yeah, alpha fetal protein is basically the albumin of the fetus. So that's a nice abundant protein, we can pick that up. Something else that can leak out if you have a neural tube that's not wanting to close. Acetylcholine esterase. The enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. Everybody kind of knows about alpha fetal protein. Yeah, everybody kind of knows about that, but they don't expect acetylcholine esterase. That's a big one that they like to test now. So that can also leak out. And if you go into the mom's amniotic fluid and you see that in the amniotic fluid, you know you're expecting something's not closing, right? Something's leaking out of the baby. So if there's a defect in the neural tube closing, we call that a neural tube defect. And it'll affect the way your brain is made and your spinal cord is made. We call all that neural tube defects. Now it doesn't have to be just your neural tube. I mean, how about the things that cover your brain and cover your spinal cord? If you have a problem with your skull, it's obviously something's gonna be wrong with your brain. So that's also a neural tube defect. If you have a problem with your spine, you're obviously gonna have a problem with your spinal cord. So we could call those neural tube defects also. So let's talk about some neural tube defects. Neural tube defects. We talked about non-closer 
non closer is that non closure and then you kind of leak things out how about something called anencephaly anencephaly is either when your skull doesn't form so your brain's exposed or your forebrain doesn't form what does your forebrain make again that'd be your cerebral hemisphere that'd be your thalamus so you kind of have this missing forebrain and your basically your skull is kind of missing and you have this divot where your brain should be so I'll just write, what do I want to write? They, they often call it like a frog appearance because that's what they kind of look like. I don't, so I'll write no forebrain slash skull. You think you're gonna leak alpha fetal protein? Oh, you betcha. Not only alpha fetal protein, always remember ACH esterase. ACH esterase. One thing that you also should know is you'll see polyhydramnios in the amniotic fluid. Why is that? Polyhydramnios is just basically baby urine, yeah? And you keep the levels down because you swallow some of it, you pee it back out. If you don't have a brain, then you can't swallow that amniotic fluid, and so that level just kind of builds and builds and builds, and you get polyhydramnios, or a lot of amniotic fluid. That's anencephaly. One thing that's not a neuro tube defect, I just want to talk about it really shortly, is hollow, Procephaly. And the reason I want to talk about this is it's also a problem with your forebrain. This is when your forebrain cerebral hemispheres don't come together. So all right. Cerebral hemisphere don't come together. So you can get these really severe forms where your basically your head doesn't come together and you can be what we refer to as a cyclops, so one eye. It's associated with sonic hedgehog mutation. This is a gene that does a lot of things in a lot of different places, but in terms of CNS, it just kind of controls where the CNS is developing. Uh, there's a lot of debate on whether or not to change the name because it seems it somewhat of a juvenile name for something so serious. But that's sonic hedgehog. It's also associated with fetal alcohol syndrome and patel and you know by now i'm not just gonna write these down and not expect you to tell me everything you know about fetal alcohol syndrome tell me everything you know about patel so pause the video tell me what you know tell me what you know about fetal alcohol syndrome that's one of the most common causes of mental retardation associated with vsd vsd how about patel what's patel trisomy 13 polydactyly polydactyly Cleft lip, cleft palate. All right, hopefully you know by now that I'm gonna expect you to be able to, to name all these facts of associations, okay? All right, that was just a side note. That's not a neural tube defect. Let's jump back into a neural tube defect. So some more neural tube defects. We can have something going on with the spine. So if something's going wrong with the spine, something's going wrong with your spinal cord. And so we categorize that as a neural tube defect. One of the big ones is spina bifida. Bifida just means split, spine means spine. So your bones of your spine doesn't fuse together, so you have this opening. And so this is your spine. And this is your spinal cord. If you have spinal bifida, your spine doesn't split. Spine doesn't come together and there's like a little hole, a little defect, there's a little split. That's the bifida part of the name. What's the problem? In spinal bifida, there's really not that big of a problem. Your spinal cord stays where it is. There's just a little split in your spine. Nothing really comes out. Okay, so one of the clinical signs, you might see a tuft of hair over the area. You might see a dimple. Uh, why causes a tuft of hair and dimples? I'm not really quite sure, but it's very classically associated with that. And so every time there's a newborn, you kind of check the back, see if there's any signs of that. Because there's no herniation because there's only a split in the spine you actually usually don't see elevated alpha fetal protein so i'll just write normal alpha fetal protein now you can have a more severe defect we call this meningeal seal there's a protective layer around your cns called your meninges which we'll talk about in the future videos and meningeal seal meningeal meaning meningeal seal meaning herniation is when this protective layer kind of comes out So the protective layer comes out, 
but the spinal cord doesn't. So I'll just write meninges herniates. All right, so that's a little more severe. And then finally, the most severe, you can probably already imagine what that would be. It's gonna be your Milo meninge seal. Milo means spinal cord, meninges means meninges, seals means herniation. So this basically means everything herniates. Your spinal cord herniates, your meninges herniates, out through this little defect. So let me draw this. Now, it will look kind of like this. Meninges seal, meninges herniates, the spinal cord herniates, bad news bears. If this was like T10, then your spinal cord at this T10 level wouldn't really work because it's, it's out of the spinal cord, it's just like blasted out. And then levels below it probably won't work as well either. So I'll just write, so I'll write neurodeficiency at level and below. All right, so that is how your neural tube forms. That is what can go wrong. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.